Hello there, minions! Welcome to Wheezy's FPS War College. I am Wheezy, and today we are going to be covering Map Movement 101. This series is designed to help you get better at all of your FPS games that you play, and we're going to break it down step by step, tactic by tactic. So for Map Movement, we're going to teach you how to dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge so that you don't get shot in the face. Uh, here is the lesson overview for what we're going to cover in this module. Um, the first lesson is going to be controlling threat direction, followed by using cover, then anticipating threat locations, avoiding obvious routes, and finally being unexpected. Now, as an overview of how these, this is going to work, for this module we're going to give you an overview of these lessons as well as the individual tactics used to break them down. In future videos, we will deep dive into each lesson on its own, as well as beyond that, deep diving into each individual tactic as well. So think of this as a tree of learning, and we are going to head down each branch in future videos. So this video for Map Movement 101 is going to be an overview of everything we're going to cover when we explain map movement in FPS games. So let's start with controlling threat direction. And if you haven't seen Top Gun, dear God, please do. And figure out where'd who go when we went like this and he went like that. I said to Slider, where'd he go? So controlling threat direction, we're going to break this down into some tactics for you. Uh, the first tactic is going to be keeping enemies in front of you. As I go through these, I'm going to give you some explanations for how it works and then roll in a clip that, that kind of covers each tactic as an example until we get into the deep dive videos in the future. So for keeping enemies in front of you, first, we're going to stay aware of directions you are vulnerable from. We'll call these potential threat vectors because we want to sound fancy and official, but also because that's a good, simple way to point out where danger is coming from. We're also going to keep our weapon pointed in the direction of the greatest threat. This is an important part of not getting surprised. And finally, we are going to make sure that we don't get flanked. A big part of map movement is making sure that we're not going to get surprised. If you want to do well in FPS games, one of the most foundational things that you can do is not end up in a position where you're in a natural disadvantage. So keeping enemies in front of you is a way of using your awareness and your movement through the map so that you don't manage to get yourself flanked or surprised. So when I say don't get flanked, what we're talking about is not putting yourself out in the open or in a position where enemies can come from multiple directions where you're not looking. Um, obviously in some situations the amount of control we have over this is limited, especially when you have some type of objective game modes. It can be really difficult to make sure that you're capturing an objective while not having routes that you can be flanked from. Most games are designed so that you have that ability just to make it more fair, otherwise you create these choke points like if any of you played the old Battlefield game on like Operation Locker or something like that. Games that are designed where there are choke points with very few operation or very few opportunities for flanking can be really, really unfun to play. But in addition to that, we want to make sure that when we're playing, we're being mindful that other people are going to be looking for opportunities to flank us. And so we want to make sure that we are pointed in the direction of the enemy, we're looking for where they're coming from, and we're aware of which directions threats might come from. So the next tactic in controlling threat direction we're going to talk about is working from the edge of the map. Now working from the edge of the map means potentially using map boundaries to reduce potential threat vectors, and we'll get into this a little bit more as we go. Um, we also want to avoid moving through the center of the map and avoiding open areas, and we do not want to get surrounded. So as you can see, these will kind of relate to each other and build off of each other. Map boundaries and things like walls or even just you know the invisible map boundaries or cliffs, however they design the levels, those are a great way to help reduce threat vectors because if you have a wall on your right hand side, you can be pretty certain that there's not going to be an enemy coming from that direction, and so it limits the number of directions you have to be monitoring from step one, where you're being aware of where enemies might come from. Using edges can be an effective way to reduce potential threat vectors. Now, moving through the center of the map, we addressed this briefly in the first one. We don't want to go out into areas where we can get shot from every angle, and especially not areas where we can get shot from more angles than we can reasonably check for targets. So. If you're moving into an objective 
and you know that there are a couple of locations where enemies naturally watch from, you can move into that area and know where you should be focusing your weapon so that you can get shots on target quickly if there are enemies there, or even do things like throw grenades or stuns or tactical equipment, whatever's available in the game that you're playing, to try and flush the enemy out or make it so that they do not have the advantage from their pre-positioned locations. Um, and we say don't get surrounded. Don't let yourself rush out into an area, whether it's to capture an objective or to attack an enemy, if that's going to immediately result in you being surrounded potentially by other enemies because you're going to end up with a trade that's not overall going to help your team. It's not going to be a great decision for you overall. So moving on to the next lesson, let's talk briefly about using cover. Now, if you haven't seen Red vs. Blue, you might not know the wisdom of Caboose who has claimed that they can't see me because I can't see them. But if that's just because you're looking at the rock, it's not going to help. So let's break down the tactics for using cover. First, we're going to protect ourselves from enemy fire. That means keeping something between you and the enemy. And using cover when moving, or moving from cover to cover in case you can't stay in cover. Stay out of the open is the core of what we're trying to do here. So when, we say, when I say keep something between you and the enemy, in the future we can talk more about the difference between cover and concealment. But even if it's something that the enemy just can't see you through, that's better than nothing. If it's something the enemy can't shoot you through, that's even better. So when you're moving to a position, again, as we've talked from step one, we're anticipating where the enemies are gonna come from, where danger's gonna come from. Knowing which direction the enemies are most likely to come from, we are going to attempt to keep some form of cover, some form of cover or concealment between us and that enemy. And again, like we talked about with not running out in the open and not getting surrounded, we do not want to avoid cover. We do not want to be out in the open if we do not have to be. The next tactic we're going to discuss is reducing enemy awareness of your movement. So we want to conceal our location and our movements from the enemy whenever possible. We want to move from cover when the enemy is not looking and don't let them know where you are. So when we, again, this builds on the first concept. Concealing your location and movements from the enemy is not just about not getting shot. It's about the enemy not even knowing where to expect you, right? So there's a difference between taking cover when the enemy knows where you are and using cover and concealment to prevent the enemy from even knowing where you are in the first place. So if you can get to an objective without the enemy knowing how you're approaching, then that gives you an advantage. Now, moving cover to cover not only keeps us safe from known gunfire, but for instance, say you get in an engagement with an enemy where, you're sh where they're shooting at you, you're shooting at them, and they take cover because you're getting some fire on them, the best time for you to move to a new position is when they've taken cover so they don't know where you are. When they re-peak, they will most likely be looking for you where you were. So if you're still there, then suddenly you don't have the advantage because they can be pre-aimed at where you're gonna be and that can give them an advantage over you, especially if they re-peak first and you peek back out where they expect you, it's an easy kill for them. So do not let the enemy know where you are as much as possible because we want the advantage, we want the surprise, we do not want fair fights. Next, we're gonna talk about anticipating threat locations. Now, anticipating threat locations can be a very deadly game of peekaboo. <laughs> now, the tactics we're gonna cover for anticipating threat locations are improving your reaction time to threats. We wanna know where our enemies are likely to be positioned we want to keep our eyes on where we are most likely to see enemies appearing from, and we don't want to get caught with our pants down because that's not good for us. So reaction time is huge in shooting in, in first-person shooters, in, in any sort of tactical shooter, because oftentimes the person that shoots first and gets the most shots on target is going to win most fights. Yes, sometimes you can turn on someone, get lucky, you know, outplay someone if they get an advantage over you. But the idea behind these tactics is to put yourself in an advantageous position as much as possible. So know where your enemies are likely to be positioned, not just which rough direction they're gonna be from, but if there's a box or a window or a place where enemies tend to be, make sure that you know exactly where that's gonna be and aim your weapon 
uh, on those locations so that you can anticipate those threats and engage them as quickly as possible when they arrive. Similarly, if you are, have multiple locations where the enemies might arrive, make sure that you're at least keeping your eyes on those locations as you're moving. Maybe put your weapon on the place where you're most likely to see a threat, but also be aware and check locations where enemies might also be coming from. We want to maintain our awareness and be sure that we are getting as much of an advantage as possible. Next, we want to move tactically, and this means being ready to engage our enemies as soon as they appear. Again, building on the last topic. We want to slice the pie or aim our weapon where you expect enemies to appear and shoot fast, shoot first. So when we talk about slicing the pie, what we mean is, if you haven't heard this term before, as you're coming around a corner, you want your weapon to be pointed right at the area next to the corner you're rounding. So as the enemies are being revealed as you're rounding that corner, your weapon is already trained on where they are. If you have your weapon pointed further away from where that corner is, if you see someone as you're rounding that corner, you will then have to readjust your aim before you can fire. Slicing the pie, keeping your reticle, keeping your aim pointed right at that corner as you're rounding it gives you the best reaction time possible if an enemy appears. So be ready to engage as they appear. Now let's talk about avoiding obvious routes. Life and death hide and seek, this is very important. Let's talk about the first tactic. We want to reduce the risk of enemies anticipating our location. Again, as you can see, we're going to keep on building on these foundational ideas. We want to avoid routes where we or our teammates get killed often. We want to avoid bottlenecks and not group up with teammates and do not walk into gunfire. So this is especially true in objective modes, but can be true in any kind of slayer mode as well. If you or your teammates are funneling into a location and you keep seeing teammates dying there, you do not want to go there, right? If your team had an effective position, they wouldn't be dying. So you may feel like, well, I'll do better. Don't take that risk. The smart move is to avoid places where you know people are gonna be getting killed on your side. Bottlenecks, places where, the te where defending teams are set up. And this could change depending on the objective, depending on how the team plays it. So you have to be aware and be cognizant of your teammates and when they start dying, when they start dropping in a certain area, you know what, even if it means having to turn around and do a different flank around the other side of the map, that's better than just walking into the bullets that just tore your teammate apart and just giving them another free kill because you're gonna pop up right where the last person they shot was. Plan advantageous routes. We wanna flank our enemies instead of taking them head on. We want to find routes that avoid where the enemies are set up and aiming. And it's more fun to take them from behind, giggity. So again, building off the last one, if you've noticed these bottlenecks, when you see where your team is going, you do not want to stack up. You do not want to give your enemies an ability to get a collateral, to get a quad grenade. You don't want to stack up. It's not going to help your team to push through a single position where they can kill you without moving their, their aim very much. You want to create an overwhelming force from different directions so the enemies don't know where to look, can't, f f uh, can't concentrate their fire, and can't take an advantageous position knowing where you're gonna show up from. So use flanking routes, don't walk into places where you know they're gonna be looking, and, and find routes that are unexpected. Especially in game modes where you may feel like you're in a rush and you wanna push an objective hard and fast, keep in mind, that going the quick way, going the fastest way, the shortest way, the most expected way, yes, it might get you the objective faster, but it's not gonna help because you're gonna get killed because the, the defense, your enemies, know that too. They know where you're gonna try and get to. So sometimes taking a long flanking route, yes, it'll take longer to get to the objective, but you're more likely to have success because you are going to be flanking the enemy. You're going to be surprising them. And this can be extremely helpful as a teammate because as the rest of your limbing teammates who did not watch Weezy's FPS War College are not gonna do, they're gonna line up and just get cut down in waves. As you flank the enemy and get the surprise on them, all of a sudden the enemy's gonna have to break location, they're gonna have to address you as a threat, they're gonna have to stop covering the bottleneck where your teammates are, and even if you aren't able to uh, take over that position, completely overwhelm the enemy, 
that distraction may be enough to get your teammate an op your teammates an opportunity to break through to the objective. So even if you ultimately aren't going to be the the one that gets through, someone's going to have to distract the enemy and flank them. And the final tactic that we want to cover is being unexpected. Improvise, adapt, overcome. When we're being unexpected, we want to keep enemies guessing. Don't go where they expect you to go. Avoid re-engaging unless you have a clear advantage. And if you're predictable, you're dead. So we've talked about using flanking routes, not funneling into bottlenecks. So try not to go where the enemies are going to set up to kill you. Now, avoiding re-engaging is an additional point. If you're in a gunfight with an enemy, if they've seen you, you've shot at each other, and let's say they're shooting at you and you've taken cover, it's not a good idea to re-peek that, that corner or that window because they will most likely be trained on exactly where you're going to appear and they will be able to shoot you immediately. So either reposition, maybe you can, if it's a window, you can crawl under to the other side and reappear from the other side of the window, which can buy you that moment where you might have the advantage, or relocate altogether. So unless you have some sort of clear advantage, do not re-engage if you've had to take cover and disengage from a fight. Um, the number of times you will win by re-peeking a corner or a window when the enemy is already trained on your location is not going to work out in your favor. It just isn't. Contrarily, on the other side of that, if you're engaging someone and they take cover, that gives you the opportunity to hold that location and see if they re-peek. Sometimes people will. Sometimes they can't help it. Maybe they think that they're going to have the advantage over you because they think that if you didn't kill them this time, you're not going to kill them next time. So briefly, recover that position in case they re-peek. But if it's taking more than a few seconds for them to re-peak, chances are they're either working on a flanking route for you or, or you might just get uh, flanked or shot at by someone from another direction. So don't hang in a location for too long to try and cover this, but maybe give it a second, see if they do a quick re-peak. If not, break off, move forward. Be elusive and be decisive. We do not want fair fights. We do not want to go 1v1 head to head with people. Use violence of action and keep enemies reacting instead of acting. And whatever you choose to do, do it. So if you make a decision, overwhelm the enemy with that decision. If you're moving on a flanking route, don't be hesitant about it. Make that move. Use violence of action. And violence of action means using force, using that feeling of momentum, that push to keep the enemy on the back foot. As soon as the enemy goes behind cover, if you pause and wait and don't take some action, it doesn't have to be pushing directly, but if you don't change locations or flank, you then give them the momentum. They have the opportunity to act and then you're left reacting. So once you've gotten, once you've made your decision on what you're gonna do, once you've taken an action and they've responded, continue to take action. Don't be the one left reacting be the one making them react, and you will have the advantage more often than not. So as a summary for what we've covered in Map Movement 101 today, we've got an overview right here of controlling threat direction, using cover, anticipating threat locations, avoiding obvious routes, and being unexpected. All of these slides, all of this information is going to be available uh, on wheezysgaming.com for this episode. Uh, you can, If this, you're watching this on YouTube, you can see it in the... Uh, link down below you'll find that so you can go to wheezygaming.com download these slides if you're the kind of person that's nerdy like me and wants to keep notes uh, you will have the uh, ability to, to grab these and use it to kind of keep track as we're moving forward through videos in the future and breaking down these topics uh, as we go forward so that's been map movement 101 i have been your host wheezy Thank you for watching Wheezy's FPS War College. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, leave us a like, leave us a comment, uh, share it with someone who maybe you want to be a teammate and that you don't want them to suck quite as much. But when they when they watch this part of the video, they, trust me, they won't know that that's why you sent it to them. So it's okay. You can do that. <laughs> if, you, uh, if you enjoyed what you had here, uh, please stick around, uh, subscribe, become a minion so that you see more videos like this. And I will see you guys in the next one.